Dave here. How are you? Today is the 17th of March 2019. A few people in the, in the States, and I don't know if any other places around the world in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, had jumped in an hour early and wondering, where's Dave? You know, bludger, take the day off. Well, no, here I am. And uh, just be aware for next week, if you're jumping out of daylight savings or going into daylight savings, to take that into account when you're looking for the show, because uh, <laughs> it ain't. You, I'm not going to be here to suit your time zone. It's my time zone, my show, my time zone. All right, what have we got on today? Now, I had a seniors moment too. I was madly looking around for my specs, and you know where they were? Right there. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't talk about those kind of things. Do you have those kind of things happen at all? Uh, I'm guessing. I'm guessing I'm not the only one because looking at my uh, stats for the show, there's a lot of people in my age bracket and also a lot of younger ones as well, but it's a bit embarrassing <laughs> when it happens. Okay, what have we got? I'll have to check the run sheet here. Free tickets to the Brisbane Timber and Working with Wood show. I have 10 of them, so I'm going to give these away as five double passes. Now I did get asked, Timber and Timber Wood and Artisans show, isn't it, Dave? That is the new name of it. But the tickets do have that written on it. So there you go. I'm kind of right, and not right. So the show is sorry. The Timber and Working with or Working Wood or Artisans show is on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Brisbane. And if you want a double pass, if you want two of those tickets yourself, you have to do what I will tell you a little bit later on in the show. But please, if you have no intention of going to the show, don't put your hand up for them because that will just dislodge someone who may have been able to win them and definitely wanted to go. Now, also, if you don't have someone to go with you, you can still apply, you know, to, to enter to see if you can win a pair. And then... Maybe if you've got a local men's shed or something like that around the area, donate one. You know, find someone that could take advantage of going to the show. This year, the show is totally different. It's not just timber and working with wood. And our, as I was corrected, it's artisans. So they're going to have blacksmiths. They're going to have uh, lead light. There's just going to be so many different things. Jump on to their website and I will put a link in the description box after the show. I haven't done it yet. But if you're on Instagram, you could type in their name as well. Timber underscore wood underscore artisans. I think that's their, their name on Instagram. Jump in there and have a look. Okay, I'm going to do a quick look down the side here because I think there's some people agreeing with me. Uh, let me see here. Dave, have already had DST here in the States. Okay, Mark Bong, good morning. Paul Angus, I had moments as well. Dave, good evening from the Bahamas, Dave and all my fellow groupies. Tim G, yes, I was looking for my specs off and Dave attempted you stream. Uh, can we all have moments like that? And it is so wet here. And I feel guilty about it being wet because there are still a lot of areas in Australia that drought has hit big time. And I don't know if they're getting any of this rain. These people are in debt for millions of dollars. These people that own farms, you've just got to get it all relative. Now, if you get a house in Sydney, I'm, I'm waffling, but if you get a house in Sydney, you're going to look at a million plus. These people have got property that you could put thousands of houses on. I know it's further out, but it's all kind of relative. These people invest in a property and also to feed their stock can cost tens of thousands per truckload. It's a huge thing. And they're just throwing money out the door. May as well set fire to it and shoot all the animals. I know that sounds harsh, but it's a really hard thing for them. Okay, what are we going to do? No rain down there for you guys. Morning, John Lafferty, how are you? Okay, the second thing on the show today, entries to the workshop signs, time to vote. Now, I've put a link down the bottom to a raffle copter competition kind of thing. So what I'm going to do in a minute is I will run all of the workshop signs and the story as a, time sh as a, as a slideshow. Now, each slide is 10 seconds long. And I'll only play it on the show here. So if you don't get to see it and read all of the comment, the, the story about that particular sign, just hit pause as the show is playing 
if you watch the recording. That's the easiest way to do it. Then jump down to the raffle copter thing there and type in the number that you want. So one, two, three, four, there's 10 in total. It wasn't as many as I thought there was, but 10 in total. And just type in the number you think should be the winner. And you can do it a couple of times or you know, five or six times, once a, once a day apparently. And uh, there you go, what's this? The 114, long time no chat, okay. I'm still reading things as I'm you know, being distracted. So I will run that in a second and I'll show you what the prize is. The prize has been donated by Ian Kerry and is this. Now, the person who wins will be a person who lives in Australia. This is not an international competition, although some of the, the uh, images that came over uh, of the workshops were from overseas and I thank you for that. That's uh, back to this one. Uh, I'll run that little slideshow now. Here we go. I'll jump down to here. I'm hoping I've got it. Here we go. There you go. Now, as I say, I thought there would have been a few more, but not to worry. Uh, maybe people don't have as many signs up as I thought they did. Now, where's my workshop sign? It's right here, but I haven't got the camera. I'm going to tip it up a little bit. Otherwise, I'll be in trouble. There it is. Okay. So, it's back. <laughs> uh, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? But that's cool. I love to get input to the show from what's happening in your shed, workshop, wood shop, whatever you want to call it. You guys get to see what I'm doing in here, which is great. I love to share what I'm doing, uh, but I also need to see the stuff that you're doing. So uh, following on to that, can you please send in pictures of what you're doing in your workshop? And here we go. Stuart last week, remember, or the week before, Stuart sent in some uh, pictures of a unit that he was building. Here it is finished, which is fantastic. And here's one of the drawers opening up. So that's what I'm after. I'm after you to send photos in. That camera's bugging me. It's up too high. It's up too high. It's getting too much of the light up the top. I'm going to tip it down a little bit. There we go. That's got it. Okay, so that's that part. Next thing, next thing, next thing. Uh, rip blade on the DeWalt. Now, you may or may not be aware that for chainsaws, just like a table saw, you can get a rip blade or a crosscut blade. The standard blade for a chainsaw that comes out would be a crosscut blade, pardon me, for cutting across a log. Now, behind me, I'm going to rip this log. Now, this is no small feat. This is around 12 inches diameter and it's just over three feet long. 
and it is an Australian hardwood and it's extremely hard and dense. It's bloodwood and I cut that down around six months ago. So it's, it's, a, it's going to be a test. Now I'm going to show you a picture of the two different blades. Now what we have here, the one at the bottom of the screen, so there's two blades side by side. The one that's actually on the bar, which is at the lower section, is the rip blade that Ian Kerry made up for me. Now that is a 10 degree pitch on it. The blade above it, you can see the angle. This is the tooth is facing to the left. So that one is a, uh, let me see. I need to just check on something quickly. Oh yeah. I, th I thought I'd put the blade in uh, back to front on the chainsaw and that would have been a very, very short demonstration indeed. So the one at the top is 30 degrees. That's a standard blade. Now this is all stuff that Ian explained to me when, I ha when he made this blade up for me. Now the other thing you'll notice, uh, the blade at the bottom, the rip blade, is a skip tooth. So it misses every second tooth. So the saw is not working as hard so it can cut faster. Now it's a funny old thing but that's how it works apparently. Okay, now back to me again over here and I have I've got the, the little DeWalt battery chainsaw. Now this runs on what's called the flex volt system. So this battery here is a 54 volt and also an 18 volt. It's a 3 amp hour 54 volt and it's a 9 amp hour 18 volt. When you plug this machine, when you plug this into whatever machine DeWalt has for it, like this is their chainsaw, when I put it in here, it's going to recognize that this is a 54 volt motor. If I was to put it into one of their 18 volts, that's a flex volt 18 volt, it would run it as an 18 volt 9 amp hour. The downside of that is it is a heavy battery because, you know, it is what it is. But I've been using these, as I say, Jeremy uh, Carter has dropped this, the chainsaw, a blower and a hedge trimmer off to me. And I've done some things on Facebook and Instagram talking about what I thought of them. And I'm very impressed with the life that you get out of these. When I ripped one of these before, I got through one log on one charge. And someone said to me, I'm surprised it didn't go more than that. Well, it's a lot of work and I was using a crosscut blade. And the other thing is running constantly, you know, pushing this thing all the way, the batteries warm up. And then if they get overheated, they'll stop. And then you have to let it cool down and away you go again. So there's a little thing on the back here tells you how much charge is in there. And this one is fully charged because it would have been very embarrassing if, uh, if I hadn't charged it. <laughs> okay. Let me see here. Ken, you broke your chair and had to travel to Melbourne to get it fixed. Wow. There you go. All right, I'm going to drop this in here and we're going to switch over. It's quarter past. I think we've got everything. How easy is that? That is a whole lot easier than going. Also, if you, I know it's common sense, but don't use a petrol chainsaw inside a confined space where you can't. I had two friends die from carbon monoxide poisoning. They used a petrol driven pressure cleaner inside an old water tank. One of them was in there working, collapsed. The other one jumped down into the tank, full of carbon monoxide, collapsed as well, both dead. Little things like this, we just, yeah, inside, because it's pouring down rain outside. I'm not gonna go outside and do this demo. And the good thing about electric saws is you can use them inside. You know, they, they make a bit of dust. I'm gonna switch the camera in a minute. But here we go. I'm gonna, put this on. Now this uh, is running a lithium iron battery in it and you can just see a little sign in there it says yellow box shed. This battery runs for about nine hours. It leaves the standard battery for dead. So if you're after one jump on a web John's website and have a look. It's been ages since you've seen me wear this I guess. Um, yep, let's do it. I'm going to start sawing from 
that end and then I might switch this camera on and you can see what's going to happen. So let's see if she's going to start. Whoa, all right. And very important, oil on the chain bar. Otherwise, it's going to flare the bar and the saw won't cut after a while. All right. Turning that on. Specs up. It's not very loud, so I haven't got to worry about it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sight straight down the log, get a bit of a cut there. Okay, I'll come around to this side and get the other camera running. I'm talking too loud again, aren't I? Where is it? Ah, oh, this one. Switch it over to there. There you go. So I'm gonna, I've got a straight line this way. I'm going to try and get a straight line straight down here. And then I've got a little trick I'm going to show you. No slouch, is it? Let me show you what else I'm going to do. Switch it back over to that one. All right, itchy nose. Now, I want to line up with what's happening down there. I want the blades to, when I do a cut from this side, because it's in the super jaws, I can't cut right through the center there, otherwise I'm into the metal. So I'm going to cut from either side. Um, I'm going to put something in there to act as a guide. Now, I think, I think I've got a bit of plywood here. Now, this may or may not be uh, wide enough or slide it in. Yep. It's full of sawdust. Of course it is. I need something to wedge that in. And this is just a visual for me. Give me a, well, actually, that might just do it on its own. How's that? So you can see what I've done there. I'll switch the camera so you can see from the other side. Okay, so I've put that in there. So when I'm down at the other end here, I can look down the log, and it's going to, it's going to tell me whether or not I'm wavering at all. I should be fine. Uh, let me see. Well, let's swing it around this camera a little bit further to that side and up a touch. That might work well. Indeed it does. It's an unbelievably good saw. Um, my guess is using computer and can switch the inputs with... No, I'm, I'm using... Well, I am using a computer to run the show but I'm doing all the camera switching manually. All right, now I've got another big chunk of timber behind me, which is cedar. I'll move it out of the way and have a quick drink of coffee. Now I've seen people rubbish these saws and I don't understand why. I've, this thing's never missed a beat. <laughs> I love it. Jeremy's gonna come up here in another couple of weeks and he's gonna join me on the show. This, and bring some more toys from DeWalt for me to show you. But uh, he wants to take this with him, and I'm, I'm going to be sad to see it go. One of the other things you need to do is get rid of the bark off a tree. If you don't get rid of the bark, you're going to run the risk of a lot of sand or, you know, things that saws don't like. So try and... I strip the bark off this, and uh, it should be fine. It keeps the blade sharp. Okay.
I'm going off ever so slightly there, but you can see it's not worrying it too much. Now if I get this cut, I'm going to try and tidy it up with the uh, Triton as well. So I'm going to start from here now. I'm going to put the blade in there and come back to this cut. I was off. I've kind of butchered it up a little bit. Come around to the other side. I'm glad I put that in. You can see where I was going. Getting there. through on the other side I'm away from the end so I can go straight down But this is bloodwood, it's not pine, this is bloody hard timber. Okay, I'm going to turn that off and we'll have a bit of a lock here. Let's switch the cameras again. Back to there. So I am pretty much there to there. So I'm going to release it on the super jaws and move it that direction. Now I'm using the log jaws in, in the Triton Super Jaws at the moment, and they are fantastic. I'm going to grab it back there, lock it, and push down. Whoop, it needs a bit more grip than that. I did have it centered. Working left-handed here. Lock. Release it again and get it to come all the way in. Lock that. Is that going to do it? No, I'm, I'm kind of. I may take it out of the super jaws and just go straight down the log. Truth be known, I was kind of thinking about this part last night. There's some weight in this. There was some weight in that. Move that out of the weight. I'm thinking to myself, what happens when I get to the middle? You haven't thought that one through, Dave, have you? Get it off the sawdust and stand him up. Right. Ah, those two cuts are lining up. I might travel with those. We'll see how we go. That and that. I'm going to work from this side, turn it around a little bit, and what I might do is bring, how will I hold that? Uh, I think I'm just going to work from this side. When I, get, when I cut through, it's going to go crunch. That's all there is to it. I'll drop the uh, it down a little bit so you can see what's happening. Or should I put this like so? I'll have a look and see what that camera's doing. Sorry for the bit of mucking around, guys, but uh, well, that's a better angle. Yep, we'll switch that over. Now, I need to be aware 
of what's happening. I'm going to follow this cut down until it gets to there. And then when I get to that, it's just going to go like that. Now it's going to make a noise, but it's going to be okay. I'm hoping. <laughs> Are you enjoying it? Let me have a re quick read here. Um, granite and Festal Rotexes and all that kind of stuff. It's, uh, I use the granite all the time. I love it. Turn this back on. Okay. Let's check how the battery's doing. If we can have a look here. Still two bars. That's pretty cool. Now when it falls, it may even hit this camera. I'm going to be pushing back against what's happening here. I need to keep my eye out on what's going on down there. Gonna have a look. Whoop, I missed. I missed it, you silly idiot. There we go. I think I've got it now. Yep. Finished. There we go. Take this off. Alrighty, pop that back over there and you can see the cuts, as I said I just missed it here. So I'm going to tidy that up with the plane and you can see it's got a nice bit of grain in there but that there looks like a mammoth amount but you'll be surprised how quick this, this plane gets through it. Actually I might do this one, I'll put that on the ground, great thing about this matting, it absorbs a lot of shock up to the other camera. Yes, yes, it really is my workshop. It's sawdust everywhere. Okay, it's all right. It's okay. I'm going to tip this back up again to about there. Okay, I'm going to put it in the super jaws. And which one was I going to plane? This one. Now having it in the center and lock it. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I'm having fun. I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a ball. Okay. Okay. It's it's a great saw. <laughs> it's a fantastic saw. All right. Now I'm not going to wear this one for the plane. Uh, I'm going to wear the uh, eye muffs. Now this also is going to be a first for me using, I've used the, I've used the beam plane before. This is a magic machine. It used to have some issues not being coplanar, but this one's fine. I think maybe whatever it was, they fixed it. But I'll tell you what, it's a great plane. Move that there. And I'm going to turn this rubbish, I'll switch the cameras back again over to the other side and come in nice and close so you can see what's happening. Okay, now have a look here. That, that is all over the place. I'm going to, oh, well that's too bad. <laughs> I was going to try and tidy this up but I've got this cut that's going down Oh no stuff, let's do it. Let's have some fun. I'm down a good three quarters of an inch that I've got to go there, maybe even an inch. The first, and as I was saying, the first that I have is I've got it hooked up to the dust extractor. I don't know how it's going to go. It's one of the things about this separator. It's fantastic for large volume, but I don't know how it's going to go with the amount of volume that this thing is going to throw out because I'm taking off one, and a, one millimeter in a pass I might, t might turn it up to two millimeters. Now I have to find the eye muffs, wherever they are. Ah, dear. 
that's one thing. There's always one thing that I have forgotten to prepare. And this time, it's IMOFs. Where are you? I'm going to check out here in the other room. Talk amongst yourselves. No, I cannot find them. Cannot, cannot find them. Well, in that situation, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wear ordinary earphones, earmuffs, these guys, and uh, let's have some fun. I'm going to read first. I've been looking at a battery saw for when I go four wheel driving. I don't have fuel, smell, and oil. Great saw. It is. You like the look of the plane. Okay, let's see how good the separator is as well. As I say, I haven't done this before, so we'll see what's going to happen. The dust is so big, it's not pulling it through for some reason. I'll have a look inside here, see if there's any answers to why it's not going through. It could be catching up on there. There's no other reason. There's no other ports open for whatever reason. I've got to reconnect. It's starting to come loose a little there. That's got him. Oh, what a machine. What a machine. Now, we've, how far down have we come? We've come, see how far we've come down? We've come down nearly a quarter of an inch already. I've only got another half inch to go. I'm going to leave it connected, otherwise it's going to throw dust all over there, and that would be terrible. So here we go.
The reason I'm stopping there is I'm going to check to see if there's a blockage. Yep, the blockage in the outlet. I thought that might happen. You know why? When I, um, the adapter that you put onto here is a smaller diameter. And for this kind of work, I don't think it's a good fit. Now, if I was outside in the garden, I would have had this off. And it would have been going absolutely everywhere. But I think that there's the blockage right there. Okay. The only problem is if I, <laughs> I'll do it. If I start this machine up now, Dust is going to go everywhere there. You watch. Well, it didn't. It didn't, but I'm waiting for the blaze to stop. Okay, I'm going to disconnect it. I'm going to clean that port out. You have a look at the underside of this beast. It's, it's a massive cut. As I say, I've got, everything's turned off, so it's kind of safe to do this. It, yeah, it's just, the blockage is, is, way, <laughs> is way down inside there. I'll use a pen rather than my finger down inside there to clear it. That might be enough. Yeah, so I don't know if you can see it here, but this here, is fine, but when I put this one inside it, it tended to reduce it down an awful lot, even though it only looks small. That, uh, that port there has been clagged. One of the other reasons is it's wet, the timber is wet. So I'm gonna try plugging it in again and see how we go. This might be boring for a lot of people, but I, you know, I enjoy learning things as I'm going along. Let's see what's going to happen. Still a blockage in there. Not to worry. I'll clean that out. But the plane is no slouch. It delivers a beautiful finish. I can't believe how good it is. And very, very straight too. There's a, we've only got about another, I don't know, quarter of an inch to go before I'm at the bottom of that. And some people might say, well, Dave, nice that you can cut the log, but you've probably got none of it left. <laughs> It's all as shavings on the bottom of the, on the floor there. Not to worry. How heavy is it? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let me have a feel. It's probably about five kilos, maybe six. So 2.2 pounds per kilo. So you're looking at 12, maybe 13 pound. It's, it's not, it's not a lightweight. But it's a powerful machine. Okay, Makita has a 12 and a half inch wide blade, but it's super expensive. Well, this guy here, let me move this camera out of the way. That one there, I don't know, it's around three or $400, something like that. And it is uh, a 180 millimeters. So that'd be about a seven and a half inch wide cut. It nearly takes the same cut as my jointer does. Yeah, yellow box shed <laughs> adapter. Okay, let me have a quick read down here. Um, it doesn't look like the plane was connected to vacuum auto start power. Are you sure you turned the vacuum on? Oh yeah, it was turned on. It was turned on. It was connected to auto start power. Um, 
Planer is eight and a half kilos. Okay, so eight and a half is, uh, let's say 10, probably 20 pound. Um, right, there you go. Everyone's doing the sums for me. Oh, now here's talking about sums. The other, last week, I think I was talking about sharpening blades for saws. Now this isn't a saw, this is a circle. Uh, but I wanted to explain why I was struggling to try and work out the term that I wanted to get from the center out to past the circumference. Now, people were saying radius, and yes, I know radius is there, but see, I was thinking of with the saw blade, you come out to a certain point, and then there's the teeth, and the teeth come out past the circle. So I was looking for a term that related to perpendicular to the tangent. Now, if anyone out there knows, I've been scratching my head trying to find it on the web, there must be a term for from the center of the circle, traveling out the radius and going past. That's the term I was searching for. And it made me look like a bit of a wally, <laughs> but not to worry, I don't care. I'm thick skinned. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cleaning up in here later on before anyone else gets to see the place. Uh, quarter two, what's the next thing on the list here? I think we're just about through it. Um, okay, yes. Now, one other thing. I, I found a couple of things during the week that I thought you might be interested in. This is a K4, Craig jig. This is a shelf pin jig from Craig. Now on the video that I did about the shelf pin jig, I did explain that there, there and there is bit holders underneath the jig. I was not aware the same thing is with the K4. Now were you aware? Put comment down and you say, yeah, Dave, everyone knows that. Well, look, you can store the drill and the collar, drill and the stop collar there. And beside it, you can put the square drive, the Robinson drive. Or Roberts and Robinson or Roberts, and I've, I always forget. So what do you think? One of those little tips. I'm thinking about making a jig for this, a bit of a plywood base and some wings and some holes and some clamps so it can be locked onto the Stanton bench. And so you can use it and won't wobble around. They supply a clamp hold point down here. I've never really been happy with it. It, uh, it gets in the way of the dust port and you know, it's a, you have to clamp onto something underneath and you know, what do you do? So as I say, I thought it might be good, lock it down onto the T-track on the top of the bench and uh, then as you're drilling, it's not gonna be tempted to lift up and move around when you take the drill out of the, the K4. Okay, I didn't know that about the K4. Now I have to go look, yeah, see, radial secant. That could be, that could be it. I, are you just, Noah, do you know these things or are you just doing quick typing on the internet to try and look clever? <laughs> I don't care, I don't care. Now, you wanted to know how to win these. These are the Brisbane show next weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I'm going to do a little next day guarantee postage stamp. So in Australia, you've got a, a standard $1 stamp. And for another 50 cents, I think it is, you can put another little stamp on it. It says, pull your finger out, get it to him the next day or the day after. So guaranteed in two days, I think. So what I want you to do, if you are in Australia, if you are in Queensland or Northern New South Wales, Basically, you're the person I want to send these to. As I say, if you're in Tasmania and you've got no inclination of wanting to go and see this show, don't, don't do what I'm about to say. Leave it for the people that can genuinely get there. There's gonna be another show in Sydney at the end of the financial year or the beginning of July. There's gonna be another one down in Canberra. I'm gonna try and get to both of those as well. I'll try and get more tickets for those. These won't work at the other show. This has got Brisbane written on it. So, it's quite easy. You know my email, davestantonfans at gmail.com. Send me an email saying why you want to get the tickets, the free tickets to go to the show. And uh, if I reckon it's a good enough reason, I'm going to send you two. That's all there is to it. davestantonfans at gmail.com. Send it, uh, just an email to me saying, Dave, I'd love to go to the show. Um, I want to take my son with me. I want to take my wife with me. We've both got really good interests. 
because it's not just timber and working with wood this year, it's artisan. So there's all sorts, all sorts of different crafts and art. So when you say crafts, people get kind of cringe a little bit, but it's not. These are these are professional people. These aren't just, you know, some someone mucking around and saying, oh, I want to uh, I want to get a, a, a colored pen and put it on some glass. These people are genuine lead lighters, blacksmiths. They're, it's worthwhile going. All right. Now, uh, as I say, I won't be there. I will be at the Sydney and also the Canberra one. I'm very, very, very sure. But, you know, not, nothing's 100% until you're actually there. Okay, next thing. So we've got that thing about the Craig. I've told you about, <clears throat> pardon me, the different blades that you can put on a chain chainsaw. And thank you very much to Ian for making that rip blade for me. You saw how quick <laughs> that went through that blood wood. And that's, it's hard. It's bloody hard wood. And it went through it so quickly. I was amazed. If I had a, um, a jig of some sort to mount the saw in, I could probably do a little bit of, you know, that ripping, you know, those fancy jigs that they've got. John Lafferty lent me one, but the, unfortunately, this blade won't quite fit in there. They sort of recommend an 18 inch, I think. So uh, not to worry, not to worry, but uh, I'm sure if Matthias Wandel wanted to, he could make up a jig and a way to go. But I really want to support John, if at all possible. Yes, okay, there is a dust port available on Thingiverse if you have a 3D printer. Did you know that? Well, for that, for that plane, for this bad boy here, I think that would be amazing. I need to see that. Can someone put a link in the description box so where it's got comments, not in the side thing here, but below this screen, if you're on a laptop or a desktop computer, type in the link to that Thingiverse uh, thing for me so I, can, so I can throw that up for everyone to see. Okay, Sam, I just sent you an email, Dave, on how to cut a straight line with a chainsaw. Some people are really clever with tools. Great, excellent. I hope they did better than me. <laughs> um, what else, what else, still reading? Just put a helical head in my Makita from Wizard Products, about 300, and the finish is amazing. Would highly recommend. Yep, helical heads are always a really good way to go. Now, what else is happening? I think I've got through everything here on the list. Tickets, entries to the workshop, signs, I hope you're voting. It's so cool. And it's really, really nice to see those, those signs that people have taken the time to send in to me. And they put their heart on the line, showing it to everyone around the world as well. You know, some of the stories are going to be cute. Some are going to be memories that may not mean too much, much to someone, but maybe a lot to that person. Obviously, they've put the sign up on the wall. And let's have a look at Ian's sign. Because he, um, he, he was the one who started it all off. There's Ian's sign. Mill, mill a, a, a port on the CNC. I possibly could. And also, you may have noticed, that I may have put this up earlier, I forget. This is my grandson, Ted, who's just turned 18 months, and he actually did scale that ladder thing before he was 18 months old. He'll, uh, it's amazing. I did a little video uh, on, on YouTube this morning and just threw it up. It's amazing. He just goes straight up these things. Not a fear in the world. No, no problem whatsoever. And then back here to me. And the thing is, fantastic for items. Yep. All right. Okay. I think that's about it, guys. I'm not going to hang around a lot today. It's, it's nearly 12 o'clock. It's, it's nine minutes to nine minutes to the hour. I've run over a couple of times before. I have got guests arriving at midday. So I need to get out of here, go and say good day to them when they arrive. So thank you, everyone, for watching. And I hope you have a great week. Look after yourselves. Be nice to everyone if you can, if they deserve it or not. That's the best way to fight it. <laughs> Be nice to them. They won't know what's going on. All right. And we have the intro and text. This is me saying goodbye. And I shall see you next week. Bye.